losses is because they can study their opponents. Right. You shouldn't need that against Alliance, right? You shouldn't have had to lose against them to study them because I, I, they're doing the same thing anyway. They're doing the same thing anyway, but they're, it's, it's a slightly different Indeed. incarnation Indeed. of the old the tried thing. and true <laughs> Alliance style. But I, I, I think there's some slight curveball. There's some slight differences. It's, I mean, it's different to 2013 Alliance, yes. but it's the same as everything they've done this patch. That's what I'm saying. I mean, they threw out some stuff like the aggressive trial lane the other day. I mean, I think there's a couple of curveballs. The Weaver pick, you got to kind of understand like when they're going to bring that stuff up. I don't, I don't think it's so cut and dry. I think one of the most difficult things that you have to deal with when you're facing up against Alliance is that there's really no other way to practice against their playstyle unless you're actually playing official matches. Yeah. There's just no way. You can't ask... If you're going to scrim, you can, you can, in theory, ask your team, ask the enemy team, hey, we want to scrim and we want right. to specifically Ten practice against this, but you can't do that with any other team than Alliance, right. and Alliance is not going to... Review any of their the systems. hardest thing to learn from scrims is late game decision making. Like when we see early like new teams coming up, like that's where they always fail, right? Like they can usually, if they dominate lanes, make mid good mid game fight decisions, like know when to take objectives. But sometimes when you get to these 45, 50 minute games and you're trying to figure out like, should we base race? Should we be split pushing now? Should we be grouping now instead? Do we sneak a rush? Do we counter the rush that they're going for right now? Those are the things that take experience and time to learn, and Alliance and EG both really, really excel at. Yeah. I think EG were probably the most prepared team for this tournament. They arrived the earliest, they boot camped. But the interesting thing is that from what I've heard, they were mostly scrimming against CIS teams. They played a lot against Navi, maybe a bit against Virtus Pro, and I don't know about Vega. Do you think that preparation against Russian or CIS teams is helpful against Alliance? I think it is actually, and it's funny you say that because EG was mostly scrimming against VP, which showed a lot of kind of all-in push strats this tournament. Um, and I think that might actually benefit EG if that's the kind of style Alliance goes for. Well, we're gonna see what's gonna happen, Lumi. First bands are out. Give us your thoughts. I'm surprised to see that EG has left the Wisp in the pool. Um, considering that, like we said earlier, EG don't really play the hero all too often, and it's definitely one of Alliance's comfort pick. At the same time, I don't think Wisp has had the best track record in this particular tournament. And, you know, you. I don't think Alliance have gotten it yet. I, I think it's just been banned against them every time. That's true. So, and they're not even first picking it. So, or well, EG sticks to the, the witch doctor meta continues. game. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The witch doctor. I mean, the witch doctor is just really good in, the, in this meta. It's good against pushing. And I think maybe what K-pop was actually going to say, like, you're scrumming against the, the Russian teams. They're also doing push strategies mm -hmm. and. Witch Doctor is really good against the push Alliance. True. Actually, people talk about split push, but split push has always been the backup plan for Alliance. They're actually a push team. Even in 2013, right. they get their timing, they push, and if they have to, they'll split push. And that's they're why they like the all nature. in. That's why they always push with to with things that they can adjust to later. That's why they like the nature's profits, right? Because it fits into the push Five and the split push. Yeah. But I, I I would still be shocked if EG picked the Wisp. So the question is, are they just fine Reserve with Alliance time. getting the Fear on and the Wisp? I think so. I think I think we saw from what Bulldog was able to do to the the Wisp of Liquid that if you you see the Wisp coming and you you pick a core that can deal with it and burst them down really fast, I think you can deal with it. But it's EGM Wisp, man. I, actually, I think that uh, Alliance were picking Wisp at the Frankfurt Major, mm -hmm. but it, it was AK playing it then, and so it, really they weren't doing that well. Well, EGM wasn't in the team then. Yeah. So. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. And, and so, like, I don't know, there's potential that they looked at that and they were like, hey, Alliance's Wisp is not that scary anymore, but EGM's back here and he was the Wisp player that was <laughs> meant was. to be scary. Dark Seer. And we finally see the Universe Darkseer. If I'm not mistaken, this is actually the first game for Universe on Darkseer this tournament. Darkseer's been one of the more popular picks, but EG just haven't really seen a need for it, but I think it works out pretty well. They've had a lot of uh, voids, enigmas. Mm -hmm. I think this actually potentially suggests that Enigma could still come out for fear. I think PPD yes. could be on yes. that Witch Doctor. I think if you get the Darkseer and the Enigma and the Witch Doctor... You what get I... the Wombo combo complete, right? And, and Alliance's plan is, is to group up and push. And like, how do you push into that Five kind of thing? Seconds. So hurry, I think in the, when we get hurry. to the second phase, we probably see Alliance ban out that Enigma that EG have been going for this tournament. I mean, they also played a Beastly Silencer on EGM uh, when one of the... I think yesterday they played it. Uh, so, got a triple kill, I believe. Ultra kill. But they... Against Team Secret. They, they almost always pick the Silencer when S4 is bad. So... I'm Fair not, enough, yeah. It's, it's meant to be like a little kind of combination. Combo, yeah. yeah. Poor but Dooney. Everyone I, I, else on his team got like mega buffs to their heroes. He's still stuck Dooney. with Io. Dooney doesn't need it. Yeah. Uh, oh, they don't go for the Wisp, so EG had a good read, I guess. Or, or maybe Alliance were like, suspicious. They're baiting it. Yeah. I mean, well, that's, yeah, yeah. that's probably the Ake hero, so it still could be 
They st maybe they're just still waiting to see if it fits their playstyle a little bit better. Or maybe they're seeing what EG banned in That's the That's a good phase. point. Like, get, if you're going to pick the Wisp, let's get more information because it's suspicious that they're giving it to us yes. kind of thing. Because if they get the, usually when you when you seconds. pick a Wisp, you pick it in the first part of the phase. So you can then pick his partner yeah. immediately Five afterwards seconds. without it getting banned. So now, Three. if they pick the Wisp now, they risk getting their favorite partners in uh, Sven Wizard and CK time. actually for Alliance. They haven't really been sure. favoring the Iotani. So I think if they pick the Wisp, then EG can just fire back with a Sven and CK ban. And then Alliance is maybe a bit... Yeah. More confused about what's going on. We saw them go for the CK in the group stage, and I believe yes. they ended up I winning that match. It's still good. It still fits the, the push strategy. Yeah. The I mean, there's there's yeah. CK that actually one has final push that had like 80 illusions. Yeah, on the CK towers. actually has more like push like push potential than just about any other core in the game. It was yeah. it was actually in the game against EG. Yeah, and, yeah, and, that and was the, game the they interesting won. thing about that game is that Five EG nearly won that game, and I think Alliance completely outdrafted them. Mm. I, I think EG didn't have anything to do with the Chaos Knight. They didn't have anything to do with the the Death Prophets. It was like. It's for, in my opinion, like we didn't actually discuss this yet, but I favor EG going into this match in large part because EG is the one team in this tournament who more than once have gone into a position where I think they were totally outdrafted and they still won. Still won. But and in that match specifically, wasn't Alliance maybe Ten less confident then than they are now? As you said, that played a big factor. Yeah, that's definitely possible. I mean, Alliance have had a lot of big victories since then, so yeah. that could also change the dynamic. But something that's interesting if we compare the heroes, I've been hearing a lot of people saying that Alliance are just playing the same heroes, and they kind of are, but there's a, there's, there's important heroes they played at TI3 that they haven't picked at all now. And you can see a trend if you look at them. We haven't seen S4 Mag. We haven't seen EGM Naga. We haven't seen AK playing Quetzal, right? Right. And the reason we haven't seen those heroes is because their playstyle used to be win the lanes, then they abuse the jungle, and then they push. Right. Abusing the jungle is not part of the plan anymore because stacking the jungle is not that efficient anymore and Correct. so that actually ch forced the lines to adapt slightly. You take advantage of the jungle just in different ways. It's With by the chin. Yeah, it's by by picking a jungler, picking an offlaner that can take advantage of, the, of stacks or not stacks up but of Farming camps. But this is this is why PPD first bans Chen because exactly. the best way they can abuse the jungle these days is with that hero. Well, also the Nature's Prophet can kind of do that to some extent because he's going to shift into the jungle when he wants right. to. I think we do still see teams abuse Dirty the jungle, but pick. in different ways. You see the carry ducking into the jungle early to create a little bit of farm, let your support get the level six. But mm. it's not exactly a very hero centric strat. I mean, it works a little bit better for Terra Blade because you could jungle better as a core. But I think both teams could look to that to you know eat a little bit more resource out of the map. But as we go through the second phase of the ban, one of the heroes that I thought Lions had a lot of uh, success with was a Spectre, and it's mm -hmm. taken out. I, I think Spectre in particular is very good against Witch Doctor. I mean, Fear, when he channels those Death Wards, he's Ooh. hiding in the trees. I like that. And then here Sorry. comes the Jakiro. Support Jakiro at that, too. Is it? It, it's, I mean, it's Dark Seer is off lane, right? Yeah. What if it's safe lane, Jakiro? It can be a, a Lodo or a Bulldog. I mean, well, yeah, it would have to be an RTZ I mean, to hero. <laughs> I, I, could, I mean, RTZ played Venge in this tournament, so... I, I don't think it's... it's not I don't think it's, hero, guys. it is not likely, but it is not outside the realm of possibility in my mind. Ten uh, seconds to pick. I think that the, the best that uh, EG have looked in this tournament has been RTZ's on like a very hard Five carry. Seconds. And yeah, it's, actually, it's actually more like Sumail's doing more tempo control to add to universe, yeah. so... Mm -hmm. So I, I actually agree, it's, this is 99% chance to support Shakira. Yeah, I would agree, but there's still a chance. Guys, yeah, they go back for the IO. Don't forget that Shakira got 7 base damage buff this patch. Yeah. He's harassing like a king. So yeah. is that going to be the burst damage for the Wisp? <laughs> attack him with Shakira. Liquid fire so I mean, I mean, on top of that, you know? Just, just to give one more one more tidbit to why it could possibly be an RTZ Shakira. RTZ has really been like really push focused so far this tournament like he's been getting a lot of his gold from taking down early towers and going for that whether it's lone druid lycan some of these other cores so it's not an, it's not crazy i think to, to think that they're just going for like a crazy like tower seed strategy. what i would think then if that is the case i would see fear on the jakiro darkseer after he gets some levels goes into the jungle and jakiro takes over the lane after he's level uh, level five yeah. has level three and that's another, fire against that's another good thing about the point for support yeah. jakiro and how support jakiro can actually Utilize work is being able to give him the yeah. lane yeah. that's actually very likely it's something eg's done a lot in this tournament actually um they've they've sent universe plus fear into the off lane and then universe moves usually when it's nature's profits but darkseer could do something similar right yeah. I, I, I actually think. Picking. Sorry, the, I, I actually think that, uh, that all of these picks on EG's lineup, look at them carefully and they're all good against Wisp. Mm. So we were asking, like, it's suspicious they led through the Wisp. They've thought a lot about which heroes they want against the Wisp. If you relocate into Vacuum or Cask or bad. Ice Path, you're in trouble. You can't catch Queen of Pain with the relocate. Yeah. I'm excited just to see this uh, mid-match. Mid oh, yeah, 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 me too. The puck uh, 
nothing but skilled involved in. Oh, no, I, no, they need to be a gentleman's agreement. All chat, no support roams. <laughs> I actually, I would love to see that. I think yeah. you would pay to see that. That's, I mean, it's one of those old school matchups <laughs> no, as well, right? No we wards mid, bad. no high ground ward for anybody. Just well, <laughs> you I, can do that. I actually think that uh, S4's pack. I mean, people talked a lot about the Weaver, but I actually think S4's pack won Alliance the first game yesterday. Okay. Because how many times do you see Alliance get into a team fight, and the reason they're winning the fight Tim is because the enemy team is trying to kill Puck. Yeah. And S4 is just so confident, so good at like, I'm low Five HP, but I'm gonna live because hurry, I got all these like hurry. jukes and jives. Ninja really, Look really at that good blue light, well. and then there's one headset that's Extra orange that jumps out. <laughs> for, for Dutch, for Holland. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I was gonna say you. for Fnatic, but they're not in. The difference, though, in that game was uh, Puck was facing against very little disables. This game, yeah. you got a bit more. You got the casket. You got the ice path. Still not exactly the most reliable stuff. Vacuum into ice path. Sure. It's nice. Sure. Uh, of course, Queen of Pain might look into getting an Orchid. Although, Queen might get a defensive Yules for herself. You know, against the waning Rift. Yeah. Also sets up DJ Kero Ice Path if they want to mm -hmm. go in that direction. Uh, if uh, who's the who's the RTZ here? here? Okay, so the band the anti. It's the last year, definitely. It's the last year. Looney. Ooh. Uh, okay. So this is a very. I think this is very pushy. It's very pushy. It's very good against the relocate, like you said. Can you imagine you just relocate into the jungle? Suddenly, eclipse greets you. Yeah. Um. More importantly, I'm also very worried about the lockdown of Alliance. You get coil, and that's freaking it. Yeah. But this is my point. Like Alliance often have these drafts where it's you can't see how they're meant to win the fight. And then it's because S4's puck and somehow he just like does these... Loaded did it a little bit yesterday on Juggernaut too, but it's usually the S4 puck where... I agree with you, Lumi, that they, they're gonna have ways to lock down the puck. But it's always a decision. If you try and focus puck and you don't kill puck, you usually lost the fight because of it. Is this a race king? Uh, I think it's more more likely to be CK. Um, okay. Because I think CK does pretty well ganking the Luna. They got, a, a, lot lot AOE. AOE. They got a lot of AoE. They got a lot of AoE. That's true. They I'm more comfortable with the rave king here because, you know... What I mean, else? Haven't seen a whole lot of rage. I mean, because the, the Juggernaut's out, kind of out, out of spins out, kind of out, 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 out. He's kind of yeah. He's kind of he's, Lotus he's kind got of the out of still. Slaughter, oh, Slaughter? No, they need way more damage. Slaughter can't give enough. I think. That's yeah, tr also true. I think they're kind of backed into a corner here, and they might have to pick something suboptimal. I think they still might go for a CK even if it's a bad pick. Could they? Could they pick Lycan? I mean, that is. A, they could go Lycan. I don't know if it really fits the drop, but it is a Kira Lotus plays. Carry a bad. No, even more uh, less, even less damage. That's not <laughs> exactly. Oh, we forgot about Turblade. They picked Turblade. Oh yeah, they got the. Oh, oh the Red nice King Shiver. Look at that. Well, it Look was as you mentioned. It was one of the only ones that was yeah. still left in the pool. Yeah, for... we're just going through loader here. I was gonna go do a Ti3 Life Stealer throwback, but Life Stealer has not been seen life at all. Life not yeah, the hero. Let's not yeah. do that. Life Stealer is not the hero right now. Okay, guys, I want to hear from you. Who, who's got the better draft? Who's gonna take this? I like, Onward. I eg. Eg. Loader's uncomfortable. Come on, come on, Louis. Alliance. Alliance. EG bet at the West. EG's gonna win. EG's gonna win. We're gonna find out which one is gonna win. Is it gonna be EG? Is it gonna be Alliance? We're gonna find out with LD and Gods. Here at Minx Arena, the crowd is absolutely deafening, and the game has not even begun yet. Gods, are you ready for this? I'm so ready. This has just been what everything's kind of been building towards throughout the Starlighter season, all the online play, an amazing land so far, and one best of three. We're going to find our champion. Well, whether or not the game works out for EG, you can definitely see that the preparation time has benefited them to game plan against Alliance. Here we go. The countdown is underway. It's time. Alliance versus EG. Bulldog on his customary one of two heroes. <laughs> Didn't get the lone drone this time, got the profit. <laughs> He's had a great tournament. He, he joked against Secret. Little do you guys know, I only had one head, one hero, guys, but he's pulling out what might be a second hero. We'll when see. you're playing against Alliance, I don't know. It's Proceed a with caution. I mean, people are talking about baiting out the IO pick, but they've just given, I feel more than the IO, it's the fact that Bulldog has Nature's Profit. That has got to give Alliance a lot of confidence coming to this series. Even though he's been playing more of the lone during this tournament, this is to me his bread and butter. This is what he got kind of ultimately known for throughout TI3. And Alliance are gonna come out swinging here with just some classic picks across the board. The S4 Puck, low to the one player who doesn't really have, I feel, as many signature heroes, but it's because of how versatile he's been this tournament. And he's they, they save this hero for last because they don't really mind what he's on as long as they secure the rest of their draft. Yeah, it's an interesting Wraith King game where it feels like they have an almost endless array of tools to kite and control him. But EG, in terms of their overall team fight, very reliant on the big combo. 
So Wraith King generally pretty good in that situation. Very curious to see how well he ends up performing. But off the bat, it's going to be Universe keeping Ake out of his jungle. Something we have seen a lot of teams trying to block that big camp near the off lane, but Universe wisely going to protect it, prevent any sort of ward placement. And that was a big thing that Alliance did yesterday against Liquid that maybe wasn't talked about so much, but blocking off Mind Control's Darkseer camp just really shut him down. It forced him to go to lane, which is where he made mistakes, got picked off a few times, and really started to struggle. So, And I actually, he's going to start there in the woods, it looks like. Yeah. I think it's something EG caught on to from watching that series, and it's very much an adjustment they made, saying, okay, if we pick Darkseid, we have to guarantee that Universe has this camp. Oh, they already want to go on him. They're going to D ward, and they move in, and he actually got an amazing spawn here. These Dark Trolls give a lot of experience, also pretty easy to kill, but Universe, he's level one. He's got no surge, no way out. It's first blood for the Alliance. And they so take the big neutral the creep as well. Universe, it's a level two Wisp. This is an amazing start for Alliance. They read him so well there. They get the D-Ward off on top of that. Universe kind of saw him coming, but he was in that like, it's so close, it's, I have to yeah. finish it. And if he th he's thinking, if I finish this, this could be my level two. If I get third, this gank does nothing. So he really just tried to push limit. Now mid lane, Sumail's had his self canceled. He's going to get orbed on as well. That's a lot of damage done. And Sumail's still a long way away from bottle. He immediately oh, buys some Oh, he's tango. still taking down another oh, no, poison. Oh, no, Ake! He's going to kill his point out. Ake up. One more auto attack. Oh, Sumail lives with three health. The puck up's not in. Not going to commit to that. Sumail just got the Blake off cool. Down. Oh my, Sumail living life on the edge, but in the end, he lives to tell the tale. I mean, Ake's just got to be like, man, three hit points. If I just had like an extra branch or something, I maybe get that kill. If he had a fairy fight, he gets that kill. Just such a, a, a tiny little fraction of a difference between the two, and Sumail's got to be just so thankful that he gets that one. Otherwise, uh, that would have been a terrible mid lane for him. Fairy Fire has been a big item at the early levels in this tournament. We see it again here on the main stage. So things are going to calm down a little bit, though Bulldog may get caught out here in the top lane. There's the Lucid Beam, the follow-up. Takiro just laying into him with heavy damage. They get the kill. Bulldog down. Already the score one to two. Still the early moments here of the game, but it feels like both teams want to play very up-tempo. A lot of pressure. And already a lot of kind of adaptations to what they've seen in the past. Like EG, typically running these dual lanes where Fear will often kind of head towards the off lane with the Universe, but they say, look, Bulldog, he's been such a key player. He's effectively the one position carry for this team. Let's trial in him. Let's make sure he has a rough start. You get the kills. You make sure he gets no farm out of the lane. And also the, the early ward from the Darkseid, who's now forced to rotate off into his jungle. He's completely abandoned the off lane. So very interesting start coming out from the two teams. Not only did they kill him and steal the big creep, they then yeah. warded it. So they salted the earth as they moved on to their next objective. And it, as you mentioned, Darkseer is still going to get something in the jungle, but it allows these supports to roam on mid, to stack their own woods if they'd like. It just frees up Alliance so much here. It seems Bulldog is also going to make his own rotation now as he's gone back to the woods. So both offlaners totally abandoned the offlane. Does feel very Tantor-esque in the mid lane. S4 jumping in, fights the solo kill on the Queen of Pain. S4 has had a dominant tournament. It's really been a comeback event for him. And again, gets the job done mid. Yeah, I mean, analysts talk about the 1v1 matchup between these two players and how important it can be. And I feel even more so for Alliance because of the role S4 plays in this team being the main tempo controller, the puck, the bat, whatever here it's on, he's the one who kind of controls the pace of the game for Alliance. Him getting a solo kill just changes everything. And winning his lane is just going to be so important for Alliance now. And we'll see both teams kind of transition to an early tier one tower push, neither of which is likely to be too contested. Bulldog's just trying to use the dreams to keep it alive. And this does give S4 time to rotate it in. The creep may be oh, dragged off. Six. This could be big. Very close to the bottom lane. Universe is going to get caught out. The heal box there. Nice body box. The orbs get the job done. Just watching S4 as it looks like any moment he could jump in. Has the, dream, the coil now. He's waiting for the opportunity. He could get Arteezy if he manages to hit the combo. Waiting for them to push it a bit further. Bulldog's also, like, I'll, I'll bait him in. They'll go at me. Just you wait. Oh, S4. Time to make the move. Orb comes through. The coil's there. Arteezy with the quick TP out. Should be okay. PPD as well. Do they get anyone? Nope. Back to the fountain. Absolutely fine. While well, they're also trying to set up on fear bottom. That bottom tower, guys, it's almost dead already. Yeah, Alliance. I don't think they were expecting EG to have the instant TP response to that play there. They will still get the T1 tower without losing their top one. And that was just such a great play by Bulldog in the top lane with his trance. 
to make sure that T1 tower didn't have the creep wave on it. The Dreams just drew the aggro through the river, and as a result, Alliance don't take too much damage. Unfortunately for them, they don't get the money for the tier 1 bottom tower, but it's still map control going their way. It's a lot of pressure on EG's shoulders right now. Man, Sumail, he's had a really rough time here on the Queen of Pain. Looking at his inventory, it's rather bleak compared to what S4 has managed to assemble at this point. Still looking for the boots, does have the bottle. It's been a rough go for him, and S4 dominating the mid lane with the help of the early Dazzle rotation. Even though he died, he shut down Sumail's regen, forced him to use the fairy fire. Yeah, but these has supports difference. just camping behind mid. They're kind of almost trying to beat Sumail this time, but S4's just been so on point. Again, you see a phase shift dodge who's gonna try and turn this one around. I don't think he's gonna be able to go for this kill. The ice part, oh! If he hits that into a sonic wave, you're looking at a kill. S4 did not have the illusionary of there, so... Tiny little bit of missing range coming out from Fear's ice, ice path. He might have had it in time to drop a coil and get a counter kill, but PPD's gonna find him down in the river. Ice hand comes through, S4 will get caught out, but only for a moment. John's away, suddenly a rotation as well for the Queen of Pain. They're really committing on to S4, but Aki's here to back him up. Believe does have a point in the grave. And now the Nature of Prophet coming in as well. Suddenly reinforcements arrive from the IO. They go up onto the high ground, PPD again to TPs. No, this time not enough. EG thwarted in their efforts to just back away without punishment. They've been pressing a little bit here, and Alliance taking full advantage. And again, more D wards coming out from Alliance. They have been completely on top of EG's wards this game, from the starting D ward that the Darkseid put down at the bottom rune to this one here in the mid lane. You know, there was the, the interview yesterday on stage where Slax asked uh, Loda, you know, we see you running a lot of the same heroes as TI3 Arrow when Alliance was on top. Do you feel like you're just back to your old tricks, or have you changed up the formula? And this, to me, is the big difference. Alliance, even though they're running similar drafts, are playing much more aggressively with the supports, and especially in this particular game. Yeah, much more aggressively, and they're playing, like, better as a team than I've seen them since that TI3 era. They are looking right now like the well-coordinated team of the tournament. For EG, it's come down to more maybe the individual play as well as, like, the drafting and strategy of PPD. And that's where this clash is just going to be so interesting. Uh, Eclipse online now for Arteezy, but tough to actually use it against the Treants in the lane, so he may have to wait for a better opportunity. PPD is going to rotate in. It is currently nighttime. A Lucid Beam can set this one up. They also get off the Ice Pass, but they kind of stack the stuns here. Cask is going to come through, but they know it's dangerous to overcommit. So they will back off, and Bulldog, he wants to go in. He's going to pop the Sprout. The Treants are there, and suddenly again, the Dazzle arrives to the lane, but while that was happening in the mid lane, they managed to kill up the Queen of Pain. S4 committing the coil, finding the kill. Alliance, just little squads of two getting the job done. And they're about to get the relocate. So their map presence is only going to amp up from here. And they didn't even overreact to the pressure top on Bulldog. He throws out the Sprout. He doesn't even get any TP support. It's just the Dazzle who's sitting behind him. And EG just unable to find the kills. You kind of mentioned it. The Eclipse is not going to be a very potent tool against the Nature's Prophets because of the Treant's ability to just soak up the damage. And it's very much a spell they want to use like when Alliance come TPing in to, as a kind of counter gank initiate, a, a measure as well as maybe Arteezy himself TPing in the other lanes. But so far we've seen EG unable to kind of use this ultimate. Well, Sumail's had enough of the mid lane. Yep. He's coming top. And Universe doesn't want to be bottom right now. And it's not just the Eclipse, it's also the Sonic Wave. EG have had this up for some time, but all the pressure onto Sumail. He's 1,400 net worth behind Radiant's S4. Is S4's individual play has A little 4v4 action. action here, top. There's a commitment from Sumail, gonna jump his way in. No relocate just yet. Beautiful grade by Ake. Keeps Bulldog alive, and now they're gonna run forward. Sumail on the run. It's S4 again, fighting the two hero Coil. They're in trouble as well. Coil's gonna snap, he might die in the mount. Barely gonna live, it looks like. Oh, Sumail! Another son of Sumail, the follow-up there, Alliance surrounding EG, three heroes crumble. This, Lotus play throughout this tournament, his TP rotations have been, like, as good as any player I've seen since, like, CDC during TI. Like, this is just unbelievable. Every time there's that crucial early game fight that looks like, ooh, Alliance may be in some trouble, Lotus just there to save the day. And he's, he spent the entire time that he needs to be free farming, and then that one crucial fight, you know it, Lloyd will be there. Has picked up the early broadsword. Are you thinking a blade mail for Loda here? Is that the, the item we're going to see on the raid? It team? looks oh, like a great item pick up this game against the Queen of Pain AoE damage against the Eclipse. There's nothing Luna can really do once you throw that Eclipse to prevent the damage being reflected onto you by by the blade mail. So it's a fantastic item for Loda to go. Not to mention just the raw stats from this. You get a bit of extra mana to like just support your, your ultimate as well as your stuns. The extra bit of damage, the extra bit of armor. 
He can now transition off this into a Blink Dagger. We've seen Radiance builds in the past, Maelstrom's as farming items, but a very cost-effective early game item for him. Well, the scary thing if you're EG, we have not seen the debut of Relocate Ganks. I believe S4's is Puck either has a Blink or is very close to getting it at this point. Uh, 1,200, so a little while to go. I mean, the story with Alliance has always been, like, they're known for their Rat Dota, but Bulldog's Prophet, this is not a game where he's going to have to split push and Rat Dota it up. If anything, I feel like Alliance, at their best, they don't resort to Rat Dota. It's something that kind of comes as an afterthought or when things maybe go into the late game and they're not ahead but typical alliance strats they win the lanes they push down towers and they'd rather stay like grouped up as a team unit and take fights to their opponent like they're doing now with eg and if anything if this game keeps kind of going along the course it's going right now we will see bulldog playing more of a fighting nature's profit build yeah he is going for the cheap items right now just trying to get active early drums will be coming out he's the third in net worth here on alliance but all three of their cores topping the charts and oh by the way that io ahead of the queen of pain alliance having an incredible start here and they're working on towers looks like they will smoke s4 looking to make a move top they have all five heroes available to join that fight whether it's the prophet with a tp and an ultimate or a relocate from the mid lane so eg could be in a lot of trouble if they group up too much. Glyph comes out, does our TZ back. He's sticking around. And here we go. The Prophet with the TP in. As to starts to fight the orb off the mark. The RTZ's gonna back away. Full health. Full mana. Tower will go down to the Dire. So a nice win there for EG. No good setup for the Puck. Yeah, hard for, if, he, if he Dream Coils, like we've seen before, Luna can just instant TP out. And unless Loda's there as well, you're not gonna get that kill. Loda getting initiated on mid lane, but he's got the reincarnation. If they chase him too hard, that's where the Puck will just TP rotate and suddenly EG will be in all sorts of trouble themselves. You can't try and take a team fight with Luna's Eclipse because of this blade mount right now. Yeah, not to mention the second life to worry about. You commit everything on that Wraith Cade. Well, he could get relocated out, he could get graved, and even if he does die, round two is going to get ugly. EG have kind of got to go into to plan B, which is going to be look to, looking to farm up Arteezy, go for the Helm of the Dominator, farm and stack Ancients, react to Alliance's moves. They can't try and take head-on team fights. They've got to try and catch like Alliance by surprise, like when Alliance try and take a tower or go for a gank, you've got to show up with superior numbers. And you know Alliance are going to be a bit more as far as on the greedy side, as far as trying to secure their farm, not have all heroes present when they're taking a fight because they've got the relocate, they've got the great global mobility of the Nature's Prophet. Even Puck, when he's got the blink, has a lot of mobility himself. So if EG can find like a quick kill, throw all their ultimates, Eclipse plus Sonic Wave, and then disengage without getting caught, that's the hard part. That's how they can call their way back into this game. Well, I mean, you mentioned superior numbers, and of course, that's always going to be tricky against this draft. They've got three heroes that can instantly join the fight from the Io and the Prophet, uh, and then the Puck may have the Blink soon, at which point, four heroes that can potentially close the gap quickly is all tier ones aside from the offlane towers are currently up here. Actually, the, the safe lane tower for EG oh, also fell. This game just gets so tricky for Smell. He's going to be going for what I can only imagine to be a Yule Scepter to try and defend himself against the newly purchased Puck Blink Dagger, which he knows is coming up any second now. But with Puck having a Blink, Alliance could just snowball. It, it, it's not necessarily going to be the case. There was the a game a game against Secret where, go back a couple of days, they got the like 12 minute puck blink. They had a slaughter with a nine minute blink dagger. They couldn't find kills. And that's what EG had to do. Basically what Secret did in that game, one of their best of three. Alliance hits all their early game item timings. They get a find bench oh, and then you four. don't keep kills. Moving in on the mid lane. He's going to fight Sumail off the map. PPD as well. Thrashed by Loda. And Alliance all of a sudden, five mid out of nowhere. Well, how do you even count? Play that. It's, it's not going to be the story of the game against Secret where they get the Blink Daggers and don't find a single kill anywhere on the map. It takes them just 10 seconds of S4's Blink Dagger to get a, a great initiation onto the onto the Sumail Queen of Pain and it's it's Bracer Gaming for EG. They are absolutely dirt poor. The two supports, the lowest farm tiers in the game. The Universe Darks here are only just now about to pick up a mech. It's coming very, very late though for the team. And even with a mech, I don't think they can really, I don't, I don't think they've got a chance to really five man into the Alliance draft. They're going to try and do their best. That's why they picked up something like a Bracer and Artesia. Likely just goes back for like a Drum of Endurance himself to try and give his team any team five presence possible. A Bulldog picking up the Gloves of Pace. Curious to see if this will be a, a Midas or a Maelstrom here. But that's a decent amount of gold, whichever one he's going for now. And oh, by the way, Loda, 3300. It is Radiance time for the Wraith King. He's saying, EG, you guys you guys are in trouble. You want to try and farm for the late game? Well, I'm going to secure my late game as well. And with the Radiance pickup, he'll 
be a huge team fight threat, not to mention just have that ability to just push out waves. And far, play. you yeah. know, you mentioned the Slardar game, they couldn't find ganks, but if you have a Radiance on your Wraith King, you don't really care that much if you find ganks, you are going to outfarm the opponent. And, and that's where I, I love how much Alliance learned from that loss when they had Slardar. They haven't changed Lotus place. He's been doing exactly what he did on the Slider, but it's not been on Slider. It's been on heroes like Juggernaut, uh, heroes uh, like Sven, heroes like Wraith King. That can also scale better into the late game than a Slider can. Alliance gonna scout things out here as the Treants parade towards the pit. This is a very slow Roach. EG feeling a bit desperate Busted. to get something dumb. And they Caught cannot the continue. Act. Yep. <laughs> there is no chance. I think even Alliance themselves, they're not even following this one up. They're going to send one more tree, but they're like, we don't even have to head that direction. There's no way EG with Roche half HP are going to continue doing it. All right. The Roche sneak didn't work. Time to smoke up yeah. again and go for the team fight. But Great the man they're going to initiate Alliance. it on here is the Wraith King if they want to jump him oh, with the IO in now. position to catch him out to save him if necessary. Pops the blade now. There's the tether relocate a bit on the early side. Are they going to counterplay this? I think Alliance will try and fight this one. It was once. a short range relocate. They've got to blow up the Wisp. Well, EGM is going to be pretty far forward, but S4 off the bat is going to find the pick. Straight down PVD. Now the two hero all the ice patch coming through, but not a very long duration one. An Alliance engage onto this. They catch out Arteezy. There's still no good opportunity here to pop the Eclipse. He's thinking about it, but he knows it would be a waste. So the Triad to get save the day. Fear with the TP out attempt. Silence not in time. Three have fallen. And Loda looking for a fourth. Universe. Oh, mid stun animation there. Didn't quite have the range, but with that, Loda, looks like the Relic has just been purchased yep. inbound from the Courier. I mean, Alliance crushed that team fight with like 4,000 net worth of Wraith King, not even on his hero. He's currently at 8k net worth. Realistically, he has 4k net worth on his hero. Just treads Blade Mount. If he has a Blink Dagger there, it's a five-man wipe. Not to say he should have a Blink Dagger. I much prefer what we're seeing here, but that just gives some perspective of how far ahead Alliance are right now. They can take a team fight like that with just all this kind of stored up gold that isn't even invested on their heroes just yet. Next time, there's going to be a Radiance. After that, there's going to be the Blink Dagger, and then EG just get beaten down even harder. They That was like one of those must wins fights for EG and... Do you, do you think they should have taken the fight, knowing that the, the Wraith King was the man in front? Obviously, by the time that relocate ends, Alliance will be in position. They really just tried to position around the, the, the relocate by having the Witch Doctor hiding in the trees. Great heads up play from Alliance to find him with the puck. And it was the tree it's of, of Bulldog scouting things out because they don't actually have vision around where the Wisp is going to relocate back. So they don't know if EG have backed off, if EG are going to try blow up the Wisp and take the fight. But Bulldog's tree it's oh, scouted out the Witch Doctor. And the team fight they're going to find the Luna here. Relocate, relocate. coming. It's surprise PPD. Arteezy caught out again. The Luna gets hacked away at Loda again. Executing our tour. Alliance, the hits keep on coming. 15 to 3. Almost a kill per minute as we are about to hit the 18 minute mark. They are getting everything they want and more. Dyer's middle This is gonna be big. In the bottom lane looks like Queen of Pain was slightly caught out, so let's blink away. We'll be okay for the moment, and it's gonna be a Maelstrom grab for, for Bulldog, so not going too greedy with the Midas. Once that hit, oh, increases damage output by a bit. And they'll pressure mid, they will back off. And in this Profit situation, it's not even way. really just a, a, a farming item. It actually gives him a lot of DPS in the fight with the, the Phase Boots drums. He just right clicks and he gets those Maelstrom procs. We're gonna see good DPS coming out of Bulldog. Oh, sorry, the Treads, not the Phase Boots. And EG, no BKBs, nothing to really be able to fight into a lion. It's right now, and it's going to be incredibly problematic for them to take any kind of engagement. EG just on the defensive here. They committed two smokes previously to get into the roast to try to gank in the enemy jungle, so the smoke supply is limited. The map control, not great with the Prophet constantly pushing out the lanes, and Treant scouting. They're going to find Jakiro in the dire jungle. Bulldog has been very disciplined with his Treant micro throughout this game, keeping tabs on EG and, if nothing else, identifying where they're not. Arteezy farming up the Ancients here. He did go for the Dominator as his first big item, but he's been punished for it, constantly being aggressed on, and usually can't survive the, the damage output that Alliance has. Bulldog continues to scout everything. The Radiant Vision also deep into the EG side of the map, in their jungle, in the bottom lane by the tier 2 tower, and items galore about to come out. A Dagon going to be the pickup for S4's Pug, and now he can just instantly take out a support, a Queen of Pain, whoever he really wants to, outside of like the Darkseer, possibly the Luna, these EG heroes are just going to be minced meat to him. And I think this is like the ideal item pickup, considering how far Alliance
Giants are ahead and how much further they can get ahead with the Dagon. He can solo kill, I think, even the Luna practically yeah. on his own. Just the Docs here, so I think. So say nothing of the supports. Really? And they've got a mech on Io. Like, EGM's getting so much farm that he can start picking up these teamfight items, which, I mean, Alliance don't even have to get the big teamfight items. It's just by sheer, like, hero level and farm advantage that they've been crushing. They've got eyes here on PPD. Tiny back in the bottom lane. They're going to move into the pit. Triance arrive. So Alliance actually want to try and take a Roshan. EGM soloing it right now with the Triance at his side. Bulldog will arrive. They are going to walk into the pit here, and they also get Vision now on the Luna, rotating towards the bottom lane, but EG, they've got the fear of God in them. Right. They, there's no no play to go out and contest this Roshan. The Lions have the ward vision. They see him coming. EG have no vision on the map. You can, like, five-man YOLO smoke this, but S4, again, his positioning such that he could see them before they actually arrive, and you run into S4, you can't actually kill him. He phase shifts, dodges everything, he blinks away. He's so elusive that he's just not a viable kill for them. And, and they just don't have great catch for a puck. There's no instant silences here. No reliable stuns that have any kind of long duration. So Alliance will get a grab, essentially a free Roshan, and now S4 with the, the Aegis can be even more aggressive. They've got two heroes with two lives. The Wraith Teen Ultimate still online. I don't think we've actually seen them be forced to use it yet. No, they haven't They haven't needed it at all. Like, I feel like we haven't even really seen Graves this game. At, at no point There's have been really... a few. Yeah, it's just like at no point have Alliance really ever been in trouble. There's not been a single fight, which outside the one fight at the T1 Tower top where loaded TPD, that was the only like iffy fight where it looked like EG had an opening. Every other engagement, every other fight, it's been Alliance just blowing away EG. Alliance at 21 minutes. Strutting up the bottom lane, looking for the quick rack there. Universe is gonna go, he's got the back, the wall as well. Quapple over the top of the mech, keeps them in fighting shape for now. Everyone survives, that's four. Still alive here, has the Aegis and the Wraith Penal. There's your first reincarnation of the game. Now the Eclipse comes through, but the Triants are there to try and take it up. Loda in a bad position here. He's trapped out, he's gonna go in, committing for this one. He's guarding them down with the Radiance. In the end, he will end up falling, no buyback available. Looks like there was no defensive relocate out. Bulldog. Does get a counter kill, but now Aki's in too far. Have they overextended the universe? Darkseer working its magic. A two for three, but they did kill the Wraith King and pop the ult as well. I think EGM, from looking the at the top, the he didn't have mana for the relocate when the respawn came from, from the, the Wraith King. And that just kind of worked against him. The mech just eating up a lot of his mana there. He had mana for relocate afterwards, but that was from popping his stick, his arcane boots. So when Loda got really low, he just didn't quite have the ability to save and pull him out. And that was partly what cost him Alliance. I think rightfully so, pushing high ground. They are so far ahead, but perhaps just missing that one core item in the blink dagger for Wraith King. Because if he dies there with reincarnation, he can probably get the instant blink away, unless there's a nice path waiting for him. But it forces EG to coordinate a lot of spells just to kill him off and makes their life a whole lot easier having that blink initiation as well, but realistically Alliance still in the driver's seat. It buys EG a bit of time to kind of continue getting whatever farming items they can get up, but there is still way too many problems for EG to solve this game. Yeah, and that was the debut of the, the Veil on the Jakiro as well, with their lineup. Heavy AoE magic damage. Yep. Very potent, but it's in that's EG's strong suit, right? When they're on the high ground, the Dark Seer can get the jump with a really good back wall. Doing that outside of the base is dramatically more difficult. And the key thing for Alliance with their position, which was on point, is that it's just the two frontliners, the Puck and the Wraith King, who get caught. Io, Dazzle, neither of them was in really risk of going down to the big AoE Wombo combo. And I think EG to win a team fight have to catch at least one of those supports, ideally both, just to prevent like the Shadow Wave heals, the mech, the relocate saves. They need to be able to find a way to take down the back lines. When we saw Io lose with Team Liquid, it was when there was a Weaver who just kept coming in from behind, taking out the Weaver, uh, taking out the Wisp at the start of the fight. And that's something which EG, I think, have to make a key point to do as well. Problem is, it's all this big AoE damage that they want to like sack onto the vacuum. They don't have that one here who can kind of come around and snipe the Io. Maybe someone like Arteezy flanks with an Eclipse, but options are very limited. The Triad summons have pretty much always been on point here yeah. for Bulldog as well. We saw that in the last fight. The bounces were a little unlucky. Uh, and quite a few beams ended up hitting the Wraith King, but the idea was there. EG, they did smoke bottom S4, great absence, even pinged this out while they were still smoked. Had it revealed a thing, he knew that EG was likely headed this way, and they have counter smoke. they're looking to make the jump. They come in onto Arteezy, burst it almost dead off the bat, Loda engaging here, as well he does have the Wraith King off, going to free to Fatal, almost kills
throws himself off the Larkizzi, pops the Eclipse, hits almost the only hitting tree, has to get Monog up point, PPD in danger now, in the trees, there's the Orc forward, and we're gonna pick him up, Thor have fallen, Fear will be the last man down, they've slain the old man, they've wiped out EG, and Alliance are gonna just power, charge their way down the bottom lane, now they can look for that first lane of Rex. This is kind of almost approaching that, that, that tap out point for EG. They probably have at, at most one last fight in them, but Alliance's lead is just well, almost insurmountable. I've got some good news for the EG fans. They got the tower. <laughs> I thought you were going to say it's the best of three, LD. <laughs> good news, it's the best of three. EG, the team, more so than anyone else, who can come back from a loss. I, pro players all across the board will say, you win it, you go 1-0 ahead in the best of three, you're normally feeling pretty good free confidence. The one exception is when you're versus EG. You get up 1-0 against EG and you're thinking like, oh crap, what's coming our way in game two? What's coming our way in game number three? And Alliance still thinking about game one, one number one for now. They haven't sealed the deal just yet. They take a melee racks in the bottom lane and playing things very cautiously, will back off and wait for their next, like, they're kind of the reset, the next level of items, wait for their ultis to come back up, the Wraith King reincarnation still not online, and there's a few more items they can pick up, even something as simple as like a Puck Dagon vibe, his ability to instantly kill someone like the Luna he just makes the fight killed so the Luna difficult. at the very yeah. start of the fight. That was vicious stuff from S4. Darkseer was forced to mech, and the only heal that was applied was really on the Luna, who was solo, solo Dream Coil. So it wasn't really efficient use of the mech for EG, but it's essential. They weren't going to win the fight without a Luna. They weren't going to win the fight regardless, it turns out. And I just EG. have to highlight how, how good S4's leadership appears to have been this game. He pinged out. Uh, off in the jungle, literally on top of EG, while they were smoked. No wards to scout it out at that point. And as soon as they saw heroes, they immediately counter smoke and go for it. He even used his blink off the bat just to get a little bit closer as quickly as possible. So their decision making has just been... They've just been much more decisive this game than historically over the past year or so when they've struggled. Impressive stuff from Alliance. And now the Dagon continues to be leveled up. There's a haste rune bottled. Oh, this is just gonna be the icing on the cake if he gets the jump. This is the, uh, the complexity smoke gank. The we're down, we're out. Five man smoke gank. We're down 20 to 25k gold. Oh, look who's there to reveal it and to catch them out. Ward gets planted immediately as we're gonna deward it. They, Nothing for PPD. Yeah. And they have no like insta catch for someone like a puck. There, there's no way to, to oh, get it. Wants to go. They're gonna start it off on RTZ Universe for the rescue, perhaps. He tries, but he gets silenced. He can't get anything off because that's four. Found the jump, but that wall comes through. The quad pulled over the top, but they're tanking the win through all the damage. It's a triple kill for Bulldog and an insta GG and ultra in the end. No mercy from Alliance. The Swedes are now on top. Lady 1 0 already. They just. Topples them. That was a brutal opening here in a best of three that Alliance makes a huge statement in game number one. From start to finish, they won the lanes, and I gotta give, as far as the dominance in this game, all goes back to the Alliance support duo. Their ability to figure out what the Darkseer was up to, they get that first blood, then Ake goes mid. EGM and Ake, to me, the MVPs of that game as far as just the early game going so well for Alliance. And when Alliance gets a good early game start with a drop like...